We last saw the Level 20 VT a couple of months ago at Computex alongside the Level 20 GT and XT. The VT is a micro ATX case and the smallest of the three. Inside and out, the VT is similar to Thermaltake's Mini ITX V1 that we reviewed, and even more so similar to the Micro ATX V21. The major difference is the use of tempered glass, which could be a sign of Silverstone syndrome, or following up a well-ventilated case with a sealed box. However, as we pointed out at Computex, the Level 20 cases are being sold alongside the older mesh-fronted V1 and V21 rather than replacing them. In addition, Thermaltake has earned the benefit of the doubt with cases like the View 71 and 37, which appear sealed, but actually still manage to keep temperatures reasonable. Today, we're reviewing the Thermaltake Level 20 VT. Before that, this video is brought to you by Lian Li's O11 Dynamic, a case largely designed by overclocker Der Bauer for high-performance water cooling, though our performance testing also illustrated strong air cooling performance. The O11 Dynamic is affordable, high build quality, and offers a unique form factor case with dual PSU support. Buy one now at the link in the description below. Thermal Takes Level 20 series is supposed to be a Halo product. We originally talked about it maybe two years ago at Computex or CES, and the tooling alone for the case was a half a million dollars plus, and they're probably approaching closer to 750,000 or higher at this point with the Level 20 revision. So really expensive to make the case, and the original was meant to be a follow-up to that BMW design chassis from ages ago, and just the Level 10 that is, and supposed to look like something special for Thermaltake's 20th anniversary, hence Level 20. I think though it released on the 19th anniversary, but close enough. They were excited about it, I guess. They released it a bit early. So Level 20, VT is the smallest of the Level 20 series. This is a $100 chassis. It's micro ATX, quick side note. We're testing with mini ITX because we don't presently have a micro ATX bench. We're just, we're getting there. But we're doing mini ITX for now just because it fits and we can still do our testing with it. So we'll go over that more later though. But the case itself, it's tempered glass mostly everywhere. It still follows the highly modular design of the V1, the V21, those older thermal takes, small boxes that were very popular for mini ITX, micro ATX systems for SFF, HTPCs, stuff like that. So this is following suit, except it's tempered glass. And as noted in the intro, it's not like they're canceling the sales of the original. So if you do prefer the mesh, cheaper steel paneled versions, you can still get that. Uh, it's just that this one goes a bit harder with the glass and thus is a bit more expensive. By the way, quick side note, these are back in stock. But uh, so this case, the most obvious thing that probably all of you are going to comment on is the minimal amount of airflow and spacing for airflow. It's interesting though, with Thermal Takes cases in the past, the View 71, View 37, they kind of followed the same pattern where they had a lot of tempered glass, but there was more sort of air spacing in between the glass panels on those, and they actually breathed pretty well, surprisingly well actually. So we can kind of give this the benefit of the doubt until we get into the thermal section later, but for the, the most part here, you have very limited gapped space in here. There's no ventilation at the top. That's okay. We'd like to see this gap raised a bit so that there's more air if you did decide to put some fans on the top for a radiator or something pushing out or, well, really either direction. But if you're pushing air out, it's just hitting the glass, going to warm up the glass, which is fine, but dispersing it out of the case is wasting a lot of your pressure. So that is a bit of a concern, but we'll test in the thermal section to see if it matters or not. Because as noted, some of thermal takes other cases that were similarly concerning actually performed very well. But the cool thing with this one is that the panels are more or less completely modular. We actually have a shot of the front panel rotated sideways as well. So you can pretty much change them and put the panels wherever you want. It's a thing thermal takes done for a while. They definitely get credit for it because it's cool. Not a lot of people, manufacturers, that is, allow modularity of cases to that degree. And so if it's something you want more customizable, it's a point of note that not many cases will give you, especially in this form factor. So this panel pulls off. The other panel, same thing. They all slide off. You can swap them around if you want. It means a bit less with this case than with the V1 V21 because you can swap mesh and acrylic panels on those and change where your airflow uh, intakes or, out, or exhausts are. The front of the case is where there's a 200 millimeter fan that is entirely blocked by glass, but there's some side intake. And we run into an H500P scenario here where 
If you gave it enough breathing room, it might be okay, but this isn't a ton of breathing room. It's, it's less than an inch for air to actually get in there. So you're losing 30% of your pressure every time you're making a 90 degree turn with that fan, which is already kind of low pressure. We'll look at the thermals in a moment, but just wanted to point it out because it's something that everyone's gonna comment on straight away, and there's good reason to. Uh, what we would like to see is the top elevated a little bit and the front either pushed out or truncated so that there's a bit more exposure to air. It does not have to be mesh. We're not asking for every single case to be high airflow mesh. It's just, you know, enough that it can get air in while still maintaining some of the look. And it's possible to do that. Even just something like ventilating this. It could probably still look pretty good if you ventilated the sides here and got some extra airflow through that vector. So anyway, that's the basics on airflow. It comes with one 200. You've got an option for a 140 in the back and options for mounting. Uh, there are rails in the top that are actually very easy to remove and move around. They're pretty sweet. So if you wanted to change your radiator setup or uh, really anything, uh, fan, top fan setup in the case, it's pretty easily done. And it just has rails that they all slot into just like that. So modularity wise, Thermal Take's done a great job on the case, making sure it's easy to work with, easy to move stuff around, easy to access. It's extremely easy to build in for a micro ATX case that's a bit larger. That's not all that impressive, but ease of installation is an important thing when you're dealing with smaller boxes, even though it's not small properly. So they've done well on the front of build quality and ease of installation. Whether or not you like the looks is subjective. That's up to you. We'll leave it up to you. So uh, what we're going to do now is go through the rest of Patrick's build notes, as always, talk about his experience with the case, and then we'll go through the thermal testing section and see if it does well enough considering the alternatives in the mini ITX testing that we've done so far. The panes of glass are mounted to metal frames that attach to the chassis, so there are no holes or screws through the glass. There's also nothing to prevent the side panels from flopping off once they've been unscrewed, but that's much more forgivable with these small and relatively light glass panels made in a small form factor case. The top pane in particular is lifted away from the body of the chassis to allow some airflow, similar to the View 71, just less of it, and the side and bottom panels are swappable like they were in the V1. The case can be placed on any of its sides by moving the bottom panel, quote unquote bottom that is, and the side and top panels can be swapped around as well. This feature is important because only one glass panel, the stock top panel, has an air gap for fans and radiators, but this panel can be moved to any side of the case if you wanted to move things around. The I.O. is attached with a single screw and also very easily installed on the top, left, or right of the case, which means that the front panel can be rotated as well, though the sticker will rotate with that. Front I.O. is adequate, but only includes two USB 2.0 ports, and for those who want it, there's no USB Type-C. There are four metal rails that clip into the sides or top of the case. A pair of them can be used to attach a radiator or some fans, which then clip onto the chassis. The concept of a semi toolless radiator mount, the rails still have to be screwed into the radiator, is a great concept, but the rails themselves are a little thin and rattly. Hopefully Thermaltake continues to develop this feature because it's one that we think works well. Thermaltake clearly intends the VT to support liquid cooling, and it even has an old school grommet on the back of the case for externally mounted open loops. Stock cooling is a single 200 millimeter fan in the front of the case behind a glass panel, and we talked about that already. We mentioned in our 280X micro ATX review that since the case was barely small form factor, it wasn't 100% fair to compare it to the extremely compact mini ITX cases on our chart. Like the 280X, the VT's volume isn't overwhelmingly smaller than a normal tower. So this gets into the same thing we've talked about with all these smaller case reviews now, where working with a small case, there are a lot of parameters, people define them differently. Our test bench is set up for really small cases, like the Raven series, where you need a, uh, a downdraft cooler to make sure there's clearance. This case clearly can fit an open loop, if you wanted to do it, really. You fit all kinds of radiators, you can fit a taller tower cooler. So our test bench is not the best representation of what you could do in the case, but it allows us to do some standardized testing. In the future, we're looking at adding maybe a micro ATX test bench, or in the very least, adding another mini ITX bench that's got a taller, like 150 tower cooler or something on it, since so many cases accommodate that. Whether or not you consider it small form factor is, it's not like there's a hard definition for it, but this would exit our definition of small form factor. It's pretty large. In terms of volume, it's a big case. And that means that the parts we use for testing aren't perfect, but they're fine for just a standardized comparison while we work towards filling out our mini ITX, micro ITX testing some more. So for the rest then, drive space is 
extremely generous given the form factor, really not a surprise for the space. There is space for three 3.5 inch drives that makes it a possible candidate for storing lots of media. There are 2.5 inch drive sleds beside that and these are attached to a track along the side of the case that can be moved around on it for optimal cable routing. For thermals and noise, the VT again, one big 200 millimeter fan in the front and can't really move it elsewhere, there's no space for it. So we didn't have a bunch of alternative configurations to test like we do on some other cases. Uh, we wanted to try swapping the side panels around so we moved them around on the case. We rotated some stuff a bit, played with the modularity for thermal testing. So we have some of those numbers for you. It's referred as rotating when we show them in the charts. That's the word you'll be looking for because the chassis was rotated 90 degrees inside the side panels. Everything else inside the chassis was rotated along with it, of course, and the front panel was rotated as well, since relocating the I.O. Uh, is sort of a hassle once you have all the components already installed. For CPU torture, focusing first on just the VT, torture testing brought average CPU DT to 66.8 degrees Celsius over ambient on the first pass, and about 67 on the second, close enough. Rotating the case slightly raised temperature to 69 degrees due to some minor airflow changes. Although the case fan was in the same position relative to the CPU, the top panel, which has the widest air gap, went from being above the CPU intake fan to beside it with the rotation. This changes where the air escapes the case and can cause a draft that pulls some cooler intake out prior to hitting the CPU fan. Relative to the V1's CPU temperature average of 69 degrees, moving on to the comparative numbers, the stock VT was slightly cooler. This is partly because the case is larger and there's more space for air movement around the CPU cooler, but also because the stock V1 has no ventilation on the top panel. In fact, the closest CPU average to the VT was the V1 with the mesh panel placed at the top of the case. That's on the warm end of SFF cases we've tested and is consistent with other cases that don't have a case fan aimed directly at the CPU, like the Taku and the SG13. The GPU torture test results were extremely consistent between runs, averaging 57.1 degrees Celsius DT the first time around and 57.2 the second. Rotating the case lowered it to 56 degrees Celsius delta T over ambient. It makes sense that rotation would help GPU temperatures since the GPU intake fan was pointed towards the ventilated bottom panel rather than the flat glass panel, but a 1.1 to 1.2 degrees Celsius improvement is only barely outside of margin of error. The VT's GPU temperature average, comparatively, is warmer than the V1's average of 55.6 degrees Celsius DT. But the V1 in stock configuration has vent holes directly facing the GPU fan. The VT is the high but not excessive range for GPU temperatures, close to the stock RVZ03 without its fan placement fixed. The case is large and airy enough that our components weren't roasting in it like the Taku, but the single intake fan struggles to push enough air on its own. The VT was closer to the V1 in 3D mark than in the standard torture test. The VT averaged 54.9 degrees Celsius GPU delta T over ambient, and the V1 averaged 54.1. GPU clock speed averaged roughly the same in both tests, although we've noted barely any variance in GPU clock speed in this test other than with our Inwin A1 baseline, which was 25 megahertz above the usual 1775 megahertz average. Again, this GPU average is well below the Taku, but warmer than the SG13 and 280X. Moving on to Blender, rendering on the CPU, CPU average temperature is 50.1 degrees, which falls in a gap between the Taku and SG13, the warmest and now third warmest averages respectively. The Blender test is less stressful than the torture test, but this confirms that even under normal workloads, heat can build up in the VT. Rendering on the GPU, GPU average DT was 34.8 degrees, similar to the V1 and the 280X, especially the V1. The stock configuration of the level 20 VT runs a bit warmer than some of the other cases we've tested on the charts, and that's because it's a fairly large case, it includes only one fan, and that fan is pretty restricted. So it's okay in basically every other category except for cooling. You can make the cooling sort of okay because it does have a lot of loops, open loop, closed loop support. You have plenty of liquid cooling options. It's just you're, you're paying for those and it is a showroom case. So if you're not looking for a showroom case, then probably skip on this one. At 100 bucks for what you're getting in terms of just the, sh the amount of tempered glass and the fact that it is meant to be flashy, it's not a bad price. It's just that there's really nothing there to be excited about in terms of uh, hard functionality. Like again, airflow, the fan is just one 200 millimeter fan, nothing special about it. Doesn't come with a rear fan at all. It's up to you to, to do whatever you want to make the cooling work with your build. So you're left on your own there, which 
sometimes is better depending on what you want to buy. So this could use an additional fan, we think, on the rear position potentially. On the other hand, there again is decent radiator support if you want to fix it that route. Beyond gaming, the VT has good potential in living room environments if you want something that's a bit larger because it does have a lot of drive support. So going for a local drives for all of your movie music, whatever, TV show storage, this might be a good solution just because it can fit a lot of them, uh, whereas you might need to go with a network attached drive otherwise for smaller boxes. The glass does actually a pretty good job of noise damping. We didn't talk about noise in the video version of this review, but it's a bit quieter than some of the other cases, and that's because you have so much thick glass, which helps with the longer wavelength noises. Uh, because it's, I mean, it's on all sides. So you've got some assistance there since there's no mesh for any of the noise to get through, but that also means air doesn't really get through. So bit of a toss up on this one where it's not the best case we've reviewed for thermals. It's pretty unique looking. Thermal Take's done a great job on modularity. They've done a good job on build quality. It's just they could improve on the thermals in some significant ways, like just lifting the top a little bit more. It makes the case larger, yes. But the case is already big. Like by all accounts, this is not really a small form factor case. So what's another quarter inch or half inch lift on the glass just to make sure that if you do put some higher pressure fans up there, you're not dealing with a ton of noise from the air getting just kind of squeezed out all the sides rather than having a direct path flow or even just a bit more elevation on it. Same for the front panel. We'd like to see this either truncated or boosted away or something or ventilated uh, cuts put in the sides just so that there's some more help for that 200 to get some air in because the 200s are already natively lower pressure than a smaller 120 or something like that. So thermal take has some things they could definitely improve upon and there are clear paths for them to improve upon it. So that's great. Uh, it'd be nice if we could see that in the first revision, but everything else is pretty good and solid. It's just that airflow needs some help. So uh, they've got a decent starting product here. If you can work with the cooling or don't care, then everything else seems fine. If it's a problem, there are plenty of other good options out there. And we'll have some of those linked in the article in the description below. If you're curious, thank you for watching. As always, go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up one of our GN beer glasses. We just restocked the Cobalt with gold rim glasses on the store. They are selling pretty fast, though, but we, we have enough for now or go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. Subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.